Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Thank God for another day that the Lord has made. And another Wednesday night Bible class. Thank God for you logging on, you following us. Thank God for your views. Thank God for a new beginning being present with us on tonight. Yeah. We have another class by the help of the Lord and strength of the Holy Ghost. Tonight we're going to deal with persecution for Christ. Persecution for Christ. Try to give a little understanding why, uh, why it seems like we go through certain things. We have to understand we have to suffer persecution uh, for Christ's sake. This is why we go through these. Th this is why we're persecuted. It's because of Christ's sake. And so we'll get into some of that. I know we have a lot of a lot of theories on why one is persecuted. And so we'll get into we'll get in we'll get into it. I've already spilled the beans, though. <laughs> I already gave up the reason why. Just for Christ's sake. I know, like I said, we have a lot of theories, a lot of reasons why we suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, according to the scripture, uh, for Christ's sake. Now, don't misunderstand. The Bible lets us know that uh, uh, it tells us, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So we talk, that's something totally different than what we're dealing with tonight. <clears throat> if you if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh corruption. That's something different. But persecution comes, persecution comes for us. Our faith, pers persecution comes because of what we believe. That, that being mocked comes from what? Because we sinning and doing wrong. Persecution comes because of our belief, because of our faith. So we're going to get into that. Before we do, we want to thank you once again for your, uh, your generosity, your liberality, and being a blessing to the ministry. The Lord continue to move on your heart and you want to give to be a blessing. You can catch us on Givelify, uh, New Beginnings Community Church, Lamore, California. No gift too small, no gift too great. They all appreciate it. And we know that the Lord will bless accordingly. So before we get started, let us pray. We'll bow here. Be gracious and heavenly Father in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we come tonight just thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for a mind to be assembled in your name. Lord, you say, where two or three are gathered, that you would be in the midst. You say, where two or three touching and agree on earth, anything, Lord God, that uh, in your name, Lord God, in your will, that <coughs> you would do it for us, Lord. We just thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, Lord. We ask that you would move in this place according to thine will. Open up our understanding, Lord God, on, with thy word, and we praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tonight we just want to try to encourage somebody because uh, we all we all go through persecution. We all suffer persecution. And so <clears throat> somebody may not know why. Somebody may not know why. And so some somebody may be discouraged. Somebody may be at their wit's end living their best life, living the best that they can do, and uh, still suffering persecution. And that could be confusing. If you come, if you up under that condemnation that tells you uh, things are happening because you're not living right. If you're under that condemnation, then you're going to, yeah, you're going to be confused. And so uh, persecution like I said, if you're not living right, but then you, you're going to reap what you sow. That's totally different than persecution. Persecution is simply uh, coming up on you because of your faith in Christ. 
the fact that you believe uh, in Jesus Christ. This is why you and I, we suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're doing, when you're living the best you can, and you and you still uh, going through persecution, we're going to hear what Jesus tells them in the Beatitudes about that. But we'll get to that. Let's, let's get in the lesson. Our focus talk, our focus verse, oh Lord, our focus verse tonight comes from the book of Galatians 5 and 11. And I got to run already. I'll be uh, reading from the King James Version like always. And Galatians 5 and 11 says, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Now, Paul is dealing with the Galatians. But first of all, let's, let's find out what persecution is or what, what how persecution is described in this lesson. Persecution is, persecution is to run after with hostility. Persecution is pressure, is trouble, is persistent annoyance or harassment, the systematic mistreatment of an individual or group by another individual or group. This is the persecution that we're dealing with. <clears throat> and persecution comes, like I said before, simply because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Simply because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Because we believe Jesus. And this is what Paul is dealing with with the Galatians. Mm -hmm. Now, Galatians 5 and 11 says, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Now, those yet in the text mean still. He said, if I still preach circumcision, which he's referring to the Jewish religion, mm -hmm. Ju Judaizers, the Jewish religion, because they preach circumcision, they preach the law, that's their gospel. So he's saying, if I still preach that, why do I yet suffer persecution? If, if I preached uh, the law, or if I preached that Jewish gospel still, because Paul was a Pharisee and he preached that back in the day, he did. He said, if I, if I still preach that, he said, why, basically he said, why are you persecuting? If I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? He said, then is the offense of the cross ceased? He said, if I preach circumcision, why do I suffer persecution? He said, then the cross, is it not a stumbling block no more, or is it still a stumbling block? Because the Bible lets us know that the cross of Christ uh, to the Jews was a stumbling block. He said, so if, if why am I still being persecuted then is the, 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 is the offense of the cross cease? Did, did, did Christ stop being a stumbling block for y'all? We know the Bible lets us know that Christ is the stumbling block preached to the Jews and you know it's foolish it's preached to the Gentiles. So he said that uh you have to understand. Now, this stemmed from the fact that there was a time where Paul had Timothy to be circumcised. And when you do your study, your research, Paul did not have Timothy to be circumcised in order to be a Christian or in order to be saved. He had Timothy to be circumcised in order that the Jews would listen to him because they are still stuck in the circumcision. Mm -hmm. They are still bound. They are still bound by the law. The, the, they are still stuck in that. So he took Timothy and had Timothy to be circumcised so they would hear Timothy. They would listen to Timothy. And so they, 
they knowing that Paul did that, this is why they say, this is why uh, they were accusing him. And so he said, if I preach, if I still preach circumcision, why are you persecuting me? You know, you, you accusing me of it. You accuse me of preaching circumcision. And so if I am preaching circumcision, why are you persecuting me? And he said, then is the offense, is Christ stopped being a stumbling block to you? Okay, then understand that uh, persecution, persecution, mm -hmm. harassment, hostility, trouble, or pressure toward you is because of our belief or our faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to really get into that, but I don't want to spend too much time in there. You can read it yourself. If you remember the, uh, the first verse, no, we'll get to the first verse. Let's jump, let's jump to Galatians. Let's turn the page and go to the fourth chapter of Galatians. Uh, in verse 28 through verse 28 and verse 29. Let's go turn the page and go to Galatians 4, verse 28 and 39. Yeah. 28 says, now, now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born of the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. Verse 30. Nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Verse 31. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Now, Galatians 5 and 1 said, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Verse 2, 5 and 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Verse 3, 5 and 3, For I testify against I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Verse 4, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are justified by the law. Ye are, ye are fallen from grace. Verse 5, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Verse 6, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith with working by love. Verse 7 says, You did run well. Who did hinder you? That ye should not obey the truth. Verse 8 says, This pers persuasion cometh not of him that called you. Verse 9 says, Little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Mm -hmm. Verse 10 says, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be no otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. In verse 11, our focus verse says, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I suffer? Why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of uh, the cross cease. So Paul is, is getting them to understand, Paul is trying to get the Galatians to understand that the I have a hard time struggling with that word, Judas, Judas, Judas side. Side, side. That a little leaven leavens the whole lump. They're trying to get, they're trying to get their false gospel back. They're trying to get their false gospel back into the ears of the Galatian believer. Because they don't want them to stand in that liberty. You have to understand why. We suffer persecution for Christ. It's because we were liberated in Christ. We were set free in Christ. And so the enemy tries to bring us back into bondage. The law is bondage. Uh, 
the spirit is liberty. The spirit is life. The law is bondage. This is why you and I suffer persecution because uh, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Uh, because we have been liberated by the Spirit. We have been liberated by the Holy Ghost. And we and we believe uh, unto salvation through faith. And those that are bound, still bound to the law, in other words, those that are in the flesh, they try with all they have to drop a little leaven in order to try to work its way back through to pull you and I back in bondage. This is why persecution is described as persistent annoyance or harassment. This is why persecution is described to run after with hostility. Mm -hmm. But if we misunderstand and we're setting up under that ministry that say that you're going through this and that because you ain't living right, pray for them. Pray Amen. for them. Amen. We suffer persecution because of our faith in Jesus Christ, because we are liberated in Christ. And Paul is urging the Galatians to stand fast in it. Do not go back or be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. So, in other words, make it real plain. In other words, the minute you make up in your mind you're going to live right, that's when your troubles start. Amen. 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 The minute you make up in your mind you're going to change your life and do right, that's when folks talk about you. Yes. That's persecution. You have to understand it's simply because of your desire or your faith or your belief in Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do if you if you perfect or not. And nobody's perfect in the flesh in that sense. Mm -hmm. Persecution comes simply because we have determined to, to live for Christ by faith. We, we are determined to grow in the grace of God. We are determined to stand fast, to stand fast in the liberty where we Christ has made us free. And so this is why we suffer persecution because of our faith, our simple belief in Christ and the enemy. Now, when we read in the fourth chapter of the Galatians, you know that dealt with uh, Ishmael and Isaac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the scripture, and the scripture said uh, that in the 28th verse, it said, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. We are the children of promise. That's where your persecution comes from, right. because of your promise. Uh, right. And so, 29th verse says, 4 and 29 says, But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. You have to understand, this is why you're suffering persecution, because the flesh is chasing hard after you with hostility, to try to bring you back into bondage, <laughs> to try to bring you back into sin. But we have been liberated in Christ by the promise of God's word. Right. By the promise of God's word. It ain't got nothing to do if my shirt is white or if my shirt is blue or if my shirt is yellow. It is simply because of the promise of God's word and my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew, let's, I got to run for show sure now. Matthew 5. 10 through 12. It said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. There it is. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. When they shall revile you, that's abusively talk about you. When they shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12. Here it is. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. Ah, you have to understand why persecution come. And he said, and when persecution come, he said, rejoice and, and be exceedingly glad, because great is your reward in heaven. We have we have a great reward in heaven. This is why the persecution comes, because the enemy, Satan, wants us to forfeit our reward. Yes. Not only do he want us to forfeit our reward, but he he wants us to be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Yeah. All right, we don't have time for that. We've been liberated in Christ by faith. Yes. We ain't got time for that. Acts 13. Uh, you, 
can note verse 45 through four, verse 52, but we're going to read verse 50. Acts 13 and 50 says, But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. Persecution. Mm -hmm. They raised up the Jews, stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of the city. Why? Because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Because of the works that they were doing in the name of Jesus Christ. So they stirred up, they stirred up persecution. They stirred up and, and, and raised persecution, raised hostility, raised harassment, raised trouble against them and expelled them out of the city. I got to keep running. You can read that and, do, and, and, and find out what that's about. Right. Uh, Romans 8 and 35. Romans 8, 35 said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall uh, tribulation or distresses or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? These things do not separate us from the love of Christ. Persecution does not separate you from the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you're under that bondage, if you're under that yoke, or if you're under that uh, ministry, and I'm not talking about anybody's ministry, but I'm saying if you're under that yoke uh, where you make the field, if you're being persecuted, God is not with you. Mm. That's not true. Romans 8.35 said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, or persecution? Now go back up and and uh, get the description for persecution. Persecution is pressure, is trouble, is persistent annoyance or harassment. These things do not separate us from the love of Christ. We read in the book of Matthew where he taught on the mountain at the Beatitude, he said when you are enduring or suffering these things, he said rejoice because your reward is great. Amen. You have to understand the word of God and and and. And we have to get out of the philosophy of men. Have to get out of the philosophy of men because it, the Bible says it's deceitful and they lie and wait to deceive. We have to get out of the philosophy of men and what we think and what we feel and we have to go by the word of God. The word of, the word of God says when you are suffering persecution it is just the opposite of what condemnation is telling you. People tell you if you're suffering that's because you're doing something wrong. Persecution is just the opposite. You're suffering it because of your faith and your trust, your belief, your hope in Christ. The enemy wants to pull you back into bondage. He wants to make you forfeit your reward. But the Lord said rejoice when you're going through. When you're living your best life and you're suffering persecution, you're being harassed by the enemy. You have to understand uh, who and what it is harassing you. This is a spiritual thing. So it's the spirit of the devil. Mm -hmm. And it, it it and the spirit of the devil can be embodied in your friend, in my <coughs> friend. But it's it's not them per se, it's the spirit that's operating. Just like uh the apostles, just like the apostles, how they were all met with all this persecution by the Jews, but we knew we know behind behind it. It was the spirit of the enemy. And so it's the same with you and I. It's, it's the spirit of Satan that is behind it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4 and 12. Uh, it says, And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, persecuted we suffer. 1 Corinthians 4 and 12 says, and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled. Being reviled is being abusively, verb verbally abused. Right. Reviled is being verbally abused. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This is why we suffer persecution. It's simply for Christ's sake. Being reviled is being 
verbally abused. He said, when you're verbally abused, bless. <laughs> Woo! He said, when they're verbally abusing you, when they revile you, he said, bless. Yeah. We bless. He said, being persecuted, he said, endure it. Go through it. When you're being verbally abused and talk that harshly, he said, bless, bless him. Bless him. Mm. And when you're being persecuted, he said, endure it, suffer it. 2 Corinthians 4, 8, 9. It said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Verse 9. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. There it is again. Cast down, but not destroyed. We're persecuted. We're persecuted. Verse 8 says, we're troubled on every side, which is the same description. He said, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Because the Lord is our help. Mm -hmm. Verse 9 says, persecuted, but not forsaken. Because the Lord promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. Now, we just read up in, in Romans, what Paul told the Romans, that that does not, persecution does not separate you from the love of Christ. So stop scratching your hair out, wondering, pulling your hair out, wondering why am I suffering persecution? You're suffering persecution because of the promise of the word of God. Uh, because of your belief and your faith in Jesus Christ Amen. and your faithfulness <clears throat> is unto God is why you're suffering. Because the enemy, ultimately all he wants to do is bring you back and entangle you again in the yoke of bondage, or in our case, sin. Yes. Right. Second Corinthians 11 and 26 say, uh, in journeying often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. This is Paul uh, explaining how he suffered persecution. Perils are trouble. When you hear that, you see that word perils, that's trouble. He's saying troubles. Troubles, troubles, troubles. Troubles. He's, he's, he's suffering these troubles. Even amongst false brother, brethren. He's being persecuted. He's enduring his persecution for Christ's sake. And he, oh my God, I, I can't get into it too much. Got to run. Uh, <laughs> 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and I'm going to let you go. 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verse 10 through 12. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. This is Paul talking to Timothy. Look, you know my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long-suffering, my charity, my patience. Verse 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me, I mean, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystria, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Verse 12, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You and I will suffer persecution because we live godly in Christ Jesus. Because our faith and our hope and our trust and our obedience and all that we have, the fact that we live, move, and breathe because of Jesus is the reason why you suffer persecution. The reason why you're being reviled, the reason why you're being mocked, the reason why they're talking about you is because they want to pull you back under bondage, back under the yoke of sin. This is why we're being persecuted, but we have to understand and abide faithful in God, because he said, uh, when they revile, he said, bless them. He said, when they persecute, suffer, endure. One place said, one, one scripture speaks about our enemy, he said, if you uh, we have to love our enemy to the to the point that if they hungry, feed them. And if they're thirsty, he said, give them a drink. It said, because doing so, then it heat colds a fire over the head. 
In other words, uh, conviction began to deal with their conscience. And ultimately, they can repent and the Lord can save them. You have to understand, God asks you and I, not only does he ask, but he, he has empowered you and I by his spirit in order uh, for us to save. So that's our whole duty is to, is to be light of the world. Now, Jesus is the Savior. But if we are obey, but if we obey the Word of God, as He's saying, if we endure hardness and if we go through suffering, persecution, then He said, "I will make you fishers of men." This is how, this is how we can get the attention of the unsaved. And then He lets us know that if they don't receive, if they don't receive. If they don't receive you at a certain point, you kick your gut, kick the heels off your dust with them. I mean, you can't stand there, you can't stand there and argue and make people do anything. Mm -hmm. But at some point, the spirit of, at some point, the Holy Ghost will release you from your burden. Amen. At some point, it will. So, understanding that if you're suffering persecution, you're right on track. <laughs> right. Suffer it, endure it. In other words, if you're being harassed by the enemy, if you're being harassed, uh, if, you, if you're being annoyed by the enemy, as the description said, if you're being, if there's a lot of hostility uh, coming your way against you, then you know you're on the right track because the life that you're living, you're living, you have to remain uh, in the grace and the liberty of God because once you do that, and if you do that faithfully, then you can't, you can't help but be a target because the enemy coming not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. So if you suffer persecution, understand it's for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. Keep living according to the faith uh, of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As it is always, we encourage you to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of them and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost on this journey because this is a Believe it or not, believe whatever you want to believe, but this journey is a spiritual journey. This is a spiritual warfare, and carnal weapons will do you no good in this battle. Mm -hmm. right. And so, before we let you go, let us pray. For bow here. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the visitation of your spirit on tonight. For your word, Lord God, we pray that you keep our hearts and minds encouraged through the persecution that we must suffer. Living godly in Christ Jesus, Lord, we know that your hand of protection is about us, and you will not allow us to be tempted, Lord, above that we are able to bear. But with temptation, Father, you're faithful. We know that you will make a way of escape. And we just thank you, Lord. We ask that you would move in our life according, Lord God, to your purpose and our needs, Father God. We pray for those that are viewing right now and what they're going through, would you comfort their hearts and minds. And we praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Amen.